we're back with our panel. Let me go right to Kim Greenberger. Kim, RLX Retail Index, the bell of the ball since, I don't know, early, mid-July. What do you do now with this thing, Kim? We think the next move for the retail stocks is down. We do think that November overall, because of... Down? <laughs> did you say down? We did say down. Are you losing faith? <laughs> no. Uh, we think that the holiday season is going to be absolutely weighted toward December and not toward November. So the next data point we get this Thursday, we think will be in line to slightly disappointing. And given the run these stocks have had going on four months now, we think that they could see a bit of a pullback near term. We'd be buying that dip for a much better December. Hey, Kim, uh, what do you say to uh, Douglas Sat, D to uh, Dougie Cass, that this uh, shopper track thing is, uh, is wrong? You buy that? Is he, is he right about that? Is shopper track wrong? We're somewhat skeptical on the 6% number. Uh, we know that Shopper Track does not have access to retailer sales numbers, so this is um, somewhat speculation on their part. Um, and we have seen um, varying degrees of accuracy in these sort of uh, preliminary forecasts historically. But um, we think it's worth taking a bit of a bigger picture view and looking at the holiday season as a whole. And the fact that we think consumers are in very good shape, Larry, we've historically seen a much stronger correlation between wage growth right. and personal consumption, right. expenditure growth. We have not really seen, particularly in, in the era of the equity um, extraction out of the house, we did not see consumers spend at potential during that period. Real weekly earnings, something like that, is up 3.2% in the last 12 months. That is the single best number since 1997, Dougie Cass. Single best wage number since 1997, and you are ignoring it. Although I will say, and pricing you, and corporate pricing power is a two-year low. Well, that's good. Look, there's deflation. The consumer prices are actually falling, so wages are rising. Gasoline prices are falling. Doug, let me just ask you something. Let's come on. Let's have yes, true please. confessions here. True confessions. Yes. Are you short right now? Uh, yes. And do you intend? Short. Do you intend to stay short? Because what I'm looking at is. What it might be that would change your mind into the Goldilocks greatest story never told scenario that I have been touting these many months, these many years? What would change you? If I saw one, a softer landing in housing. If I was confident, too, that interest rates were um, going to be cut by the Federal Reserve. And number three, if I saw some diligence on the part of uh, the budgetary process. The budgetary policy. process. Holy cow, not in my lifetime. Although it's possible. <laughs> John Augustine, you heard Doug Cass. Mm -hmm. He wants a little lighter fed. He wants a soft landing in housing. Uh, your scenario is actually pretty close to that. So as mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, if you're right, then Dougie's got to change his view. Well, we're, we're about on the other side of all your panelists tonight, unfortunately, except Kimberly. We're in She's the lost hope too, though. She's lost nope. faith. I've never heard. I don't think in two, three years I've ever heard her bearish. It's well, incredible. No, no, no. We we would agree with one point there. If you look at the retail stocks, the last three years in a row, they've peaked at Thanksgiving, then they've moved down into December, and then they've moved up a little the first of the next year as those gift star gift cards started being redeemed. So we we would agree with her assessment on the on the retail shares at this point. Investors may want to take some profits out of those and move to an underinvested area at this point and rotate out. But on, but on the other side of the equation, you know, we're, we're in the camp that the Fed's going to have an opportunity to cut next year. Mm -hmm. We're in the camp that the 10-year the Treasury, we've got the highest one in the G7 now. It ain't, it ain't going much higher unless we're completely wrong on inflation. I think it could drop to four, four and a quarter percent in this off landing, John. And, and the way real rates just jumped up, it gave it the, it's, it's now given every opportunity for it to be able to drop John, down. what's your favorite sector right now? So transfer, or excuse me, rotate into staples and some portions of health care and EFA. You want to buy health care even with Don Dingle and Henry Waxman? No, very narrow. Think about the equipment people. Think about biotech that can't be too affected by Congress. Gary Schilling, uh, what do you got, a 3.5% 10 years? Is that your estimate? I think we'll get to 3% eventually. And 3%. We look at, and we look at the long bond, the 30-year yeah. bond. That's what I like. Which yeah. is just it's, south of 5, where is it, five, uh, 4 and 3 quarters now, the 30-year? 4.7. Yeah, and I, I think it's going to get to 3% eventually. Now, we're looking for mild deflation down the road, which will probably be initiated by the next recession, which we think will be underway early next year. And that goes back to this collapse in housing. I mean, housing is just 
brutally important to the economy. That's what's provided the wherewithal to keep consumers spending these, these many years. And when housing goes, that's it. The speculators get hammered, but the people who've been depending on house appreciation to fund their spending growth way over their income growth are the ones that are really going to be affected. John Luskin, uh, you think that bond's going to get to 3%? No, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Maybe the inflation premium in the bond will get to 3%. That'll explain half of the 6% yield that we're going to be seeing six months from now. 6%? That's the only 3% then how much? you're going to see. Hey, you want to short some bonds to me? Wait a second. How many do you want to do? Yeah, yeah done we'll deal. Want to short some to me? Deal. You name your number. Well, wait yep. a second. Don, if you, you got a 6% bond, okay, fair enough. That's your view. Uh, what does that do to the stock market if you are right? That's a huge hickey for stocks, is it not? That is going to be a huge hickey for stocks. I think, you know, I'm, I'm looking for the top here. We're not there yet. I'm bullish for now. But sometime between now and six months from now, I'm looking forward to calling the top. I'm going to ring the bell. We're not there yet, but we're on our way because the next it, move of rates is higher. What does a 3% long bond do? I mean, that's like uh, 25,000 Dow. Sure. Well, it, it's assuming it's, America's still hey, it's standing. A, it, that's, a, like that's a, a twenty-five thousand like dollar. Hilarious. It's like the Fed. Everybody says, "Oh, the Fed is going to cut all as well, and stocks will go through the roof." The Fed cuts when the economy's in trouble. The long bond will get to three percent when we have mild deflation. And mild deflation, even though we think it's a good deflation of excess supply, not the bad deflation of deficient demand, it still is going to be a rough environment for stocks, largely because of the huge indebtedness in this country. When you have deflation. The real value of debt goes up, not bond. Yes. It's, it's down. It's That's the, the whole history of, of the 19th century. Who was saying Larry a minute ago? This Fed's going to cut because they went too high by 50 basis points in the first place. Core inflation's going to move down to allow them to do it. Neutral Fed funds rate, John Augustine, I reckon is about four and three quarter percent right now. And that is where those boys and girls are headed. Yeah, that's where they're headed. That's the last time they had a balanced risk assessment. Was it 450, 475? And what would that do to the stock market? That's got to be a 10, 15% bullish right off the top. Yep, if we're taking and posting 2% GDP numbers, S&P goes to 1,600 by the end of next year. Oh, John. John Augustine, you are so rational. You are <laughs> so insightful. To be pragmatic. You are so <laughs> you are so pragmatic. You are so capitalist. I right. so much agrees with you. D <laughs> Dougie Cass, my pal, we're gonna give you the last word. What should an investor do from your perspective? I think an investor should uh, take four and a half percent, which is the money market rate you could get at a, on a brokerage account for cash and uh, be very cautious in here. I think, as I said last week, I think we've seen the high for the market uh, for the year and perhaps for some time. Yeah. And um, I don't know how you can be optimistic on inflation with the X energy prices of industrial spot materials near all-time highs. All that, um, tells and me, all that tells me is global growth is strong. The U.S. monetary base hasn't moved in 11, 10 months. That tells me Fed has stopped creating excess money. The yield curve is inverted. Bond rates tell the story. Low tax rates are pro-growth and counterinflationary. We are out of here. Don Luskin, thank you. John Augustine, thank Doug you. Cass, Gary Schilling, and Kimberly Greenberger, who says sell the retails now but get ready to buy.